Did you know that we're only born with two fears, according to most research? The first one is a fear of falling, better known as a fear of heights. And the second one is a fear of loud noises. These two fears were useful for survival reasons back in our ancestral times. We probably wouldn't be here today without the birth of these two fears, which leads to the first point of us understanding our fears. Fear is ultimately a good thing. Without fear, humanity would have become extinct a long time ago. Fear helped us survive real dangerous environments throughout our evolution. Our mind's creation of fear as a survival mechanism, I personally think is pretty unbelievable. But see, originally, our anxiety was only triggered when we believed our survival was at stake. For instance, if we're standing on the edge of a high bridge, we will feel a rush of terror as we look down. This emotional reaction is common and well-placed for that particular situation. If we fall off the bridge, we most likely die. But as much as our panic has helped us in the past, it's harmed us equally in the present. You know, we, we live in the modern world right now where there's not all these impulsive fears that are, are driven by a physical reality to be safe. You know, we're not being chased by animals that are trying to kill us often, right? Our bodies and minds response to fear is incredibly outdated when it comes to modern times. Most of our fears are irrational for the times we live in now. To illustrate this point, let's use a situation anybody could relate to. When we see an attractive stranger that we would like to talk to, our unease to actually approach them will inevitably arise. This is also fear wiring from prehistoric times when it could be dangerous to approach the wrong person in your tribe. But as you know, we don't live in those times anymore. If you think about it, what is the worst that could actually happen in that situation now? The attractive stranger doesn't feel the same way towards you? Maybe at the very most tells you you're hideous, they're not interested, and you should fuck off? That's about it. I mean, sure, this may pain us on an emotional level at first, but it certainly wouldn't mean our death, as a bridge example of fear stated earlier would. In fact, this situation with the attractive stranger would do the exact opposite. It would help us grow and learn to deal with our pain and become more evolved and happy. See, nowadays, majority of the fears we have exist only in our minds, despite the over 100 phobias that Google will tell you exist. Most of these worries we created in our own minds. So then it begs the question, how do we start to update our mind's interpretation of fear to be more on par with modern times? The simple answer to this is we can't. Evolution is a slow process over so, so many years and our brains can't rewire themselves that quickly, unfortunately. But that doesn't leave us helpless in the face of our fears. It simply leaves us to treat fear as a choice. Most of the people who are on the journey of conquering their fears agree on one thing we have a choice to overcome it. Suzanne Jeffers, PhD and author of one of the best-selling books on fear of all time, backs this point up with the title of her book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyways. You know, I wrote Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. People say, oh, you must never be afraid. And I said, no, 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 that's not what I said. I said, feel the fear and do it anyway. Dale Carnegie, the guy who wrote How to Win Friends and Influence People, very popular book, also expresses this point perfectly with his quote, do the thing you fear and keep on doing it. That is the quickest and surest way ever yet discovered to conquer fear. Or even Emerson's classic quote, do the thing we fear and the death of fear is certain. Realize this for the next time you're just standing around and you just feel that fear just pop up. Realize this fact right here. Fear has two definitions to it. Forget everything and run or face everything and rise. When we get struck with that moment of fear, we have two choices, succumb to our fear or embrace with our courage. We can either run in the face of our fears or face them right there in the moment with our courage. If we choose to act, we choose courage instead of fear. I learned over my journey of conquering fear, fear and courage are really just two sides of the same coin. Those are the only choices available to us when we feel our anxiety rising. Ordinarily, courage is mistaken for a character trait, but it's not. It's an action. It's acting within the presence of fear. That's exactly what having courage is. The ability to act even though you're scared to. So you gotta look at every time you feel fear, it's an opportunity to be courageous. And being courageous is exactly the answer to conquering fears. There really is no other way. 
So now that you know how to conquer fear, the process of it basically, let's work on changing the relationship you have with fear, with your fear. And I'll, I'll share some of the personal ways that I changed my relationship with my fear and it kept me motivated to keep going every day. I personally kept myself motivated by looking at fear as a sort of game we play. And in fact, the game we have to play the rest of our lives. The way I see it, every time you don't face fears, it guarantees nothing in your life will change and the game is over. This is a guaranteed path to a mediocre life. I don't suggest it for anybody. But if you choose to play the game of fear and courage, it'll actually enrich our lives. Choosing courage over fear creates opportunities that wouldn't otherwise be there. For instance, if you were trying to get a raise for a while, the thing that's probably holding you back, I'm guessing, would be going up and asking your boss for it. Guess what? That's the courage I'm talking about. You can never get that raise without the courage to go ask your boss for it. You will never have a relationship with that special person unless you have the courage to go up and ask them out. You'll never create that business to bring you financial freedom without the courage to quit the safety of your current job. Hey, listen, I quit. You'll never be able to chase your own goals without having the courage to have that hard conversation with your parents about not chasing their goals. And you'll never have that perfect relationship without having the courage to end your imperfect one. I noticed on my whole journey of personal development, fear it, it really encompasses every aspect of our life where growth or change is required. Everything we desire to change or make better in our lives is on the other side of our fear. Author and self-development expert Maxwell Waltz says this in his fantastic book, Psycho-Cybernetics. Having a goal and understanding the situation are not enough. You must have the courage to act for only by actions can goals, desires, and beliefs be translated into realities. And then he goes on to say, all problems become smaller if you don't dodge them, but confront them. Touch a thistle timidly and it pricks you, but grasp it boldly and its spine crumbles. That's a fantastic metaphor for exactly what we're talking about. And another thing I really kind of had to shift my thinking on was the point of conquering fear isn't to get the things I was going after. I'll say that again. The point of conquering my fears wasn't to get the things I was going after. Going back to the case of approaching the beautiful stranger you see, you approach them merely because you felt fear to approach them in the first place. You don't care about the result. That's just actually another fear, the fear of outcome. The point of it was me being in control of how I act and behave during the day. And when you do that, that creates the opportunities for you to place yourself in more and more situations which you may or may not be rewarded for. But inevitably, by the law of averages, you most likely will be rewarded if you continue to face your fears every day. The larger point of all this is just to start and never wait until you feel you're ready. This is such a huge issue with our generation. Maxwell explains this point perfectly in Psycho-Cybernetics. He says, if we wait until we are absolutely certain and sure before we act, we will never do anything. Anytime you act, you can be wrong. Any decision you make can turn out to be the wrong one but we must not let this deter us from going after the goals we want. You must daily have the courage to risk making mistakes, risk failure, and risk being humiliated. A step in the wrong direction is better than staying on the spot all your life. Once you're moving forward, you can correct your course as you go. So the point may not be to get the things you're going after, but there is one thing we will always, always get by facing our fears with courage. And that thing is confidence. We are guaranteed to become more confident when we face our fears. Most of our fear arises in areas that are unknown to us. Once we move forward and face our fears to get a better understanding of that unknown fear, we then become a bit more competent in that unexplored space, which in turn will bring us confidence in that unfamiliar area of our life. Once something becomes knowable, you can develop competency around it. Once you can develop competency around it, then you can develop confidence around it. 
There's this old thing in psychology we call the competence confidence loop. The more you understand something, the more confidence you have in that area. It's actually like a pretty simple equation to break out. I'll put it on the screen right now. See, once we act on a fear, we become just a little bit more confident in that area of our lives. We also feel this inner sense of accomplishment that can't be bought. I kind of see it as every time we feel fear, it's an opportunity to create more confidence for ourselves. There's a few more tricks I noticed to fear also. Keep this phrase in mind. Those who hesitate, disintegrate. If you allow your thoughts to start running wild before you choose to act, you pretty much just assured yourself you will not take action on that opportunity that's right in front of you. This is especially true if you're just starting out on conquering your fears. When we're facing things we're uncomfortable with, this is one of the very few times in life we have to act without thinking. Thoughts are pretty much fuel to the fire of our fears. When our thoughts start taking over, our body acts accordingly with our thoughts and succumbs to our fears. Avoid that what if thought we always tend to get during anxious moments. The best thing to do is just act as soon as you feel fear. Action destroys fear while inaction feeds it. You realize that the point of maximum danger is the point of minimum fear. If you're finding it tough to even just start conquering your fears, remember this golden rule of fear. Every time we face a fear, we gain a little bit of confidence. With this in mind, you can always, always start with your smaller fears first. Baby steps was my personal approach, and it's the suggested approach from many experts. Ellen Hendrickson, PhD and clinical psychologist at Boston University Center for Anxiety and Related Disorders, encourages the baby step approach. She says, you don't have to jump in with both feet. On the contrary, facing fears means starting small, playing a tiny, more manageable, snack-sized goal that doesn't make you cringe. Maxwell also agrees, in Psycho-Cybernetics he said, practice acting boldly and with courage in regard to little things. Do not wait until you can be a big hero in some dire crisis. Daily living also requires courage, and by practicing courage in the little things, we develop the power and talent to act courageously in more important matters. After conquering more and more of those smaller fears, you'll naturally become more confident in yourself to tackle the bigger fears in your life. The biggest thing to keep in mind is no matter what happens, you can handle it. No matter what happens in life, we can handle it. And as an end point for this video, it should be known that fear is within every one of us. Fear handicaps everybody in life. We all feel it. It's actually very fair that way. Those who say they don't feel fear, either feel it the most, are in denial, or have some kind of disorder in which they feel no emotions at all. Even when you become a master at conquering fear, the feeling of fear itself will still be there. But it's when we start acting on our fears that we see them exactly for what they are. Unevolved thoughts that keep us from a better life. In today's civilization, most of our fears only serve to protect the egoic image of ourselves. We all know the things that will improve our lives. In fact, fear is usually a great indicator of exactly what those things are. So just remember, the next time you're out and about and you feel that fear rise, that is the exact moment that you can choose to be courageous. Just become conscious of the fact that it is a choice, your choice.